In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, the 26th of November, 2019. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Today's readings. The first reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verses 31 to 45. The Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 to 11. I read from the Gospel. When some were talking about the temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stone work and votive offerings, he said, All these things you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. And they put to him this question, Master, they said, when will this happen? And what sign will there be that it is about to take place? But he said, Take care not to be deceived, because many will come using my name and saying, I am the one, and the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be terrified, for this is something that must happen first, but the end will not come at once. Then he said to them, Nation will fight against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines in various places. There will be terrifying events and great signs from heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived by false prophets. Do not be deceived by false prophets. Dear friends, today's gospel picks up from yesterday's. After the offerings put into the treasury yesterday for the temple, today the people began to talk about the temple, as it were, admiring it what their offerings were doing, and how they were spent. They were remarking how well adorned with fine stone work and votive offerings the temple was. In summary, their offerings were well accounted for. The temple was remarkable. God's good people, this also comes back to us, especially as spiritual leaders and all those who receive the money and are in charge of the people's contribution for development-based projects. How well do we use the money? Can the people see their money being spent into good and effective use? Or the money is ending up into private pockets? Money meant for the community is for the community and should not end in private pockets. Every year, We hear billions of money are issued out for contracts to serve public interest, 
but at the end, both money is gone and no work is seen. Christians contribute offerings for church projects, lots of money, harvest, thanksgiving, etc., you name them. How do we account for this money? Can they see their own temple and boast like the Jews that the temple was well adorned because their money and offerings are judiciously spent? Again, Jesus tells us about the passing reality. True, the temple was beautifully adorned, but we may spend our time praising the well-adorned temple, forgetting to realize that these are all passing realities. And so Jesus tells them, a time will come when all this beauty you see, you will not see anymore. True that Jesus was talking about the temple, but it also symbolically refers to us, our own passing realities. The world is passing. Our bodies are passing. And so no matter how much time we take, to decorate these bodies, they are like the temple in Jerusalem. The time will come when these beautifully adorned faces will no longer be the same. The time will come when they will all pass away to decay and corruption. In the second part of the gospel, Jesus talks about the end time once again. He says the time will come when all this beauty we see will pass away. Again, the question of when comes up. Hearing him say this, the people ask him, when will this happen? Because of his insistence on the end time, some people took advantage of this and began to frighten the people and extort money from them. They used this end time sing song and began to deceive the people. The time is now. The time is now. The people rushed up to them. They came up saying they were the savior who has to come. Jesus wants the people. Take care, he says, not to be deceived. Because many will come using my name and saying I am the one and the time is near. Refuse to join them. Luke chapter 21 verse 8. Dear friends, what Jesus said still holds true even in our day. Many have come claiming to preach Christ and offer salvation to the people. We have churches of all kinds and brands. We have pastors and prophets of all mix and categories. Beware. Beware of where you enter and where you worship. On social media these days, there are stories and images of prophets and pastors exposed. We see them doing all kinds of horrible things, all in the name of deliverance, anointing and blessings. Oh, dear children of God, Jesus wants us. Refuse to join them. Some are using God's name and religion for a new business enterprise. Some for fame and to make a name. They worry about their numbers and following so as to get more members. They so-called perform miracles to win crowds and then ask the people to sow seeds and so simply they end their billions. They advertise and broadcast their live shows on social media only to win a following. We will never worry about numbers, dear friends. We will not preach the prosperity gospel you want to hear. We will not perform magic to amuse the crowds and do so for the gallery and so get followers. We will not impose tithes on you. We will preach the gospel of Christ crucified, the gospel of the cross, the gospel of suffering. We will preach love and forgiveness. And when you do all this, the miracle from God will come. If you do not want to listen to us, the gospel of truth that we preach, and you seek to follow these who come saying they are the Messiah and they are the Savior, Jesus tells us, you will be deceived. We easily get deceived for those who are deceived because we chose to be deceived, truly. We fail to put reason before emotions and are easily carried away by the spectacular. 21st century Christians are Christians of the social media. Take care not to be deceived, Jesus tells us. Refuse to join them. If you want to follow social media, you want to follow the gallery, you want to follow the prosperity gospel, you will just be one of those who will be deceived. Jesus himself tells us, He who is the master whom we serve and follow, that in the world we would have suffering, but we have to be brief, he has conquered the world. But if you want to listen to the beautiful gospels that the people preach to you of prosperity, suffering is not your portion. As a child of God, sickness is not your portion. Beware. Be warned. Don't fall a victim. Do not be deceived by false prophets. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>